Today we are exploring Nick Vivian's studio in London. Um, I went to art school but um, I came out as a graphic designer and I was in advertising and graphics okay. in the 70s. Yeah. And then, um, then I went, spent 20 years working in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I'm absolutely infatuated with colour. Yeah. That's why I paint sunsets basically, because that is light and colour are the same thing. Yeah. I mean, when I look at anything, it's the colour I see first. Uh, yeah. It's always colour, not what it is, but it's the colour. Two blues, two yellows. You know, a red, and that's all you need. White, get through a lot of white. Well, this is the new one. I, um, yeah, this is um, permanent orange, Michael Harding. I don't use black, obviously. I, my, my influences come from the Impressionists and yeah. the um, Fauvist movement, all the Fauvists. Everything yeah. I need is on here. This is the palette. And, you know, the knives are up there on the wall behind you. So the paint all goes on? Yeah, it's on quite, quite, quite big. You use quite a lot of paint, you know. You have to paint like a millionaire, as they say. You know, <laughs> not worry about it. I mean, some of the paints, you know, forty pound a tube. You know. Well, I've never used this one. This one, I think, is actually for flipping. <laughs> uh, for That's the biggest size, actually. That one. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really like the way the oil moves under the knife. I mean, that's where my influences started when they invented the tube of colour. Yeah. And Van Gogh, and he just loved it. He just squeezed it all out onto the canvas. You know, they are very uplifting. <laughs> they do, they have such an effect on, mm. on mood. Yeah. yeah. Like pasta painting yeah. it takes 12 months to dry. Right. That's why it has to be done so quickly. You, you know, once it starts drying, you've got to stop painting. You lose all those spontaneous yes. marks. You start playing around. First mark you make is the best one. You, you sort of do it in one live yeah. session. Yeah. You were saying. Yeah. I mean, it looks clever at the really, because there is an underpainting. <laughs> 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 so you plan? Do you, yeah, do you have yeah, some sort of, of planning, planning to goes it? into it? Um, I always do have a dark foreground because it gives a good contrast with the bright and the dark. Right. You get that glow. You do have the joy of being able to scrape it off. It's not, you know, not what you want. But I've never done. I've never enjoyed doing that because it, I, I can, I can tell that I've done that. You know, I used to be able to look at a painting and see almost the last mark made by the artist because yeah. you can see the filter yeah. how it's been done. And if something is scraped off, it always leaves a bit behind and it spoils it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll probably put a canvas ready for that. I stretch all my canvases. The way the light comes up from underneath the clouds and light sees up. You know, it's only a fleeting moment. You know. When I was in Saudi Arabia, I was painting yeah. the sky and ceilings for dining rooms that seat you know, 500 people, you know. What you? <laughs> so, oh, wow. massive. I mean, I had a whole team of 12 artists to do this sky scene. You've been, you know, a master of, of skies. Well, for, sky for painting, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been it. doing a lot, and seen a lot of skies. Thank you, Nick, for allowing us into your studio space today. We have thoroughly enjoyed discussing your work.